Tuberculosis is usually transmitted by coughing. Each patient infects on average 15 others. Up to 10% of infected people develop the actual disease. Treatment is difficult and requires a combination of antibiotics during a minimum of six months. Early detection of the TB bacterium is important for a more effective treatment. Sans diagnostic, il ne peut pas avoir de traitement adéquat. Parce qu'avant de traiter quelque chose, il faut savoir de quoi il s'agit. La tuberculose se manifeste surtout par la toux, une toux qui dure. Mais il y a beaucoup d'autres maladies qui donnent aussi une toux qui dure. Et donc il n'y a que le laboratoire pour dire au médecin c'est la tuberculose, ce n'est pas la tuberculose. After a successful diagnosis, test results from the lab remain essential to monitor treatment and reveal how the bacteria react to antibiotics. Au départ, tout se faisait à l'IMT, mais progressivement, l'IMT nous a aidé à mettre en place toutes ces techniques ici. D'abord la microscopie, puis la culture, et donc une personne de notre laboratoire, Madame Blanche Tanimombo, a été à l'IMT se faire former sur ces techniques et a pu les mettre en place ici. J'ai vu comment il faut travailler de façon aseptique, de propre, rigoureux, pour avoir un bon résultat. Et c'est ça que je transmets tous les jours à tous les collègues, tous les jeunes qui viennent ici. Je suis toujours en train de leur montrer la rigueur qu'il faut mettre dans le travail pour avoir un bon résultat. Diagnosis of active TB relies firstly on a microscopic examination of coughed up mucus. This is a fast and relatively straightforward laboratory test, which requires well-trained personnel. If microscopy is non-conclusive, microbiological culture is used. This is a method of growing bacteria in culture media under controlled laboratory conditions. Culture is more accurate than microscopic examination, but it may take up to 56 days to know the result. Actuellement, l'OMS nous considère comme un laboratoire supranational candidat qui a toutes les capacités qu'il faut pour pouvoir devenir supranational, mais il manque juste qu'on ait un laboratoire P3 pour pouvoir acquérir le titre. Et nous espérons que dans les quelques mois à venir, nous allons finir ce laboratoire-là pour acquérir pleinement le titre de laboratoire supranational. Just like TB, the Baruli ulcer infection is also caused by mycobacteria. It starts with a painless nodule under the skin. As the disease progresses, lesions develop, sometimes producing massive, mutilating ulcers. C'est une maladie négligée parce que, en termes de recherche de médicaments, ça n'intéresse pas les firmes pharmaceutiques puisque le marché n'est pas très grand. A disease is often neglected when it mainly affects poor people in tropical regions. Baruli ulcer is not deadly, but it has a large social impact because of the high cost of patient care and the physical handicaps it causes if not treated properly. Early diagnosis by a reliable laboratory is therefore extremely important. PCR, sometimes called molecular photocopying, is a more recent and very fast technique to detect and identify bacteria like the Mycobacterium ulcerans. 
At present, LRM is the only laboratory performing this test for Baruli patients in the country. Avant, c'était les douleurs, fatigue, invitation. Mais depuis que le centre est venu ici, je vois que ça va mieux. J'ai vu beaucoup qui sont guéris, plus de 100 et quelques personnes qui sont déjà guéris. Parce que je vois beaucoup, mon centre là travaille beaucoup pour nous. Dieu merci, la centre là est venue ici. On va remercier Dieu. Thanks to the continuous Belgian support and training, a well-functioning lab network for Baruli diagnosis is now in place in Benin. L'IMT a pensé au renforcement des capacités locales. Pas seulement au transfert de techniques, l'IMT a pensé d'abord à former les gens. Je suis un exemple. Il y a beaucoup d'autres PhD qui ont été formés. Ensuite, nous développons en commun des projets de recherche. Et de plus en plus, l'UMT nous pousse à prendre la tête de ces projets de recherche-là. Et les ressources humaines qui peuvent faire décoller les choses sont là. Maintenant, il reste à monter les murs. Et je n'ai pas de doute que lorsque la fondation est bien faite, les murs vont être montés et sans crainte que ça va s'écouler. Government aspect lege. Utta rala amsalpa private ke vata re. Chya ke private ke vata re. Government aspect lege sare ke treatment sigala. Doctors time sare sigala. Yu jara dasti kaili anda ga chakka ne sustai girte. Ta log kai kanto kan elrupe kotti kai kan kundka meko kai beko. Angagi un doya trupe norupe vodro le paraila jal nor tar re. Treatment na dud kor tivi jaldi treatment kor tar na mungye ana mana bau denta private agyo thors kan tar eh cha government go ala al nori dure serige al go gama illig barama al bars kamba kupan tendi janta karna gula wo nor ente kel tir tar eh patient tille susta guadar bekar eh aur jitte wo brad bere wo beko aur dud me nor beko abre wo thors kan ka gala. In most parts of India, if you need to open a small shop, even if it is just to sell tea or coffee, you need to get licenses. But if you want to start a clinic, you can just start a clinic and there's nobody to check whether you're a doctor, you're not a doctor, whether you're a nurse or you've not been qualified, you're just an ordinary person who decides he wants to treat. public health sector, it's a free of cost and the services are subsidized. Whereas in the private sector, we have a huge variety of providers ranging from unqualified, untrained doctor to a highly qualified doctors. And even when you look at the health facilities also, you have a small solo clinic to a highly specialized corporate hospital. There are various studies which have shown systematically that the technical quality of care is not any better in the private sector compared to the government sector. In fact, many times it is worse because many times the private sector does unnecessary treatment because of the financial incentives. In fact, statistics show that about 60 million Indians every year become impoverished because of medical expenses only.
The Institute of Public Health is a non-profit organization that wants to strengthen the health system to ensure quality health care, especially for the poor. A lot of health factors are still unknown in India, so IPH focuses on research into urban and rural public health issues. The poor suffer more from illnesses because of the surroundings, the environment in the sense that there is not clean water, the, there's a lot of garbage, uh, sanitation is poor, which is why we started IPH to strengthen the government health services so that at least the health services for the poor will be assured. Making private and public health providers work together is challenging because of their different approaches. 70% of the Indian population they prefer to go to private sector. Now, whatever the government uh, talks about the statistics, you know, there is so much of infant mortality or there is so much of TB cases, malaria cases. It's just talking about the patients who are reaching public sector. What about those who are treated by private sector? Government has no clue. IPH tries to find solutions to bridge all these gaps. Through an extensive e-learning program, it also trains healthcare professionals at the district and national levels. The IPH e-learning course on public health management is one of the first of its kind in India. So I think we are the pioneers in e-learning and that is thanks to ITM for giving us all that support. IPH gains new insights through research rooted in local experiences. Healthcare issues are tackled in an active way from inside communities, like here in the Urban Health Programme in KG Halley. The Urban Health Programme is an action research programme, which means that we work with private doctors and government doctors, with the community and with the elected representative from this ward of the city. So we are trying to improve the quality of services using all the local stakeholders. So they come into dialogue with each other and we try to come forward with a common solution. The community viewed us four years ago. One more set of people coming and asking us questions. But today, our girls and our team are invited into the homes and people say, please come, we have this problem, can you help us sort it out? ITM has helped us grow as an institution, but more than that is the relationship that we have with ITM, which is built on a solid foundation of trust and transparency. We treat each other as equals and we learn from each other. Truly a two-way interaction. Making healthcare in India work is a vast undertaking, but local talent is rising to the challenge. It feels like you're navigating between rocks in a river and you have to get to the other side, which is quality care. After completing his PhD in Antwerp, Halido Tinto returned to Burkina Faso to set up a malaria research center from scratch in 2008. À la fin de mon PhD, il se posait la question 
s'il fallait retourner au Burkina ou aller chercher ailleurs parce que j'avais eu de très bonnes propositions pour aller aux états unis avec toute ma famille. Alors c'est dans cette optique que j'ai eu une discussion avec l'IMT qui, à travers la coopération belge, a pu m'offrir ce qu'on appelle le Reentry Grant. Donc c'est un financement qui m'a permis de revenir, de me stabiliser et de créer ce que vous voyez aujourd'hui, l'unité de recherche clinique de Nanoro. Il faut savoir qu'au départ on était 10 et aujourd'hui on a 254. Donc ça s'est fait entre 2008 et 2013. Kroon performs medical research and clinical trials to improve public health with a focus on malaria. The research center increases scientific knowledge and considerably improves the health care available to the local population. En me formant en 2003, on ne pouvait pas savoir que les qualités de soins allaient être améliorées ici. Et aujourd'hui, vous voyez que c'est une réalité. Et c'est pourquoi nous investissons beaucoup dans le volet de la formation du capacity building. Clinical trials are increasingly carried out among poor communities in countries with limited resources. Exploitation looms as people risk being pushed into taking part in the trials. Pour la mise en œuvre d'un essai clinique de qualité, il y a plusieurs choses. Il y a les principes de bonne pratique clinique parce qu'il y a des normes qui sont définies sur le plan international que nous devons respecter. Mais il y a également la collaboration de la communauté dans laquelle vous travaillez. Et il est important de dire que cette participation est volontaire, on n'a obligé personne, mais nous avons tenu à les faire comprendre que les résultats qui vont être produits seront utiles, pas seulement pour Nanoro, mais c'est également pour la population générale. Et je pense que ce message est passé, et aujourd'hui nous avons une très bonne collaboration avec cette communauté, et nous espérons que ça va continuer comme ça. The traditional chief of Nanoro is 91 years old and has dedicated his life to the well-being of his community of 27 villages. He firmly believes there are four basic conditions for building a fair society. Peace, enough water and food, education for children, and health care for all. Moi, je suis né paludien, jusqu'à présent, je suis paludien. Alors, je connais ce que c'est. C'est une maladie qui est très grave. On parle, on parle du sida, mais je crois qu'aujourd'hui, ben, le paludisme est aussi grave sinon plus que le sida. Nous avons compris qu'ils sont venus pour, pour notre intérêt. Et nous nous sommes soudés. Chaque fois qu'ils nous disent « telle chose se fera dans votre intérêt », nous leur disons « nous sommes prêts à vous écouter » et nous sentons que nous sommes protégés. Nous sentons qu'il y a des gens qui veulent que nous vivions. Quand on aime quelqu'un, il faut qu'il vive. Si vous l'aimez et qu'il n'est plus là, ça ne sert à rien. Pour moi, l'élément essentiel dans le développement d'un pays, c'est les ressources humaines. Pas de ressources humaines de qualité, pas de développement. Et je pense que le gros problème que nous avons en Afrique, et c'est bien que ce soit un Africain qui vous le dise, c'est que nous manquons une masse critique de chercheurs ou en tout cas des ressources humaines de qualité. Et c'est vers là qu'il faut orienter les efforts. Et je suis content aujourd'hui de voir qu'une structure comme l'IMT a compris. La collaboration que nous avons avec l'IMT est assez originale parce qu'il y a ce qu'ils appellent le « ownership », il y a l'appropriation des décisions et de la recherche par les Africains. « Informed consent is the act where you get permission of the patients to get him involved in this kind of experiment. We have general rules and of course we also have to consider the kind of context where we work. Nous avons accueilli ici au moins 7 ou 8 pays africains qui sont venus ici acquérir les connaissances de base sur les bonnes pratiques cliniques. Un curriculaire de formation en collaboration avec l'IMT et en collaboration avec Rafaela qui permet de faire des formations aux gens du sud. Donc c'est une collaboration sud-sud. Ce qui est bien parce que la collaboration a toujours été nord-sud. Et nous, nous voulons mener une collaboration également sur le sud parce que nous commençons à avoir les ressources. Le paludisme est une maladie très grave parce que c'est la maladie actuellement qui tue le plus au Burkina Faso. Et le cas spécifique du Burkina, on a au moins 5 millions de cas de paludisme chaque année. 5 millions de cas et malheureusement, on déplore pas moins de 5 000 décès chaque année. Et surtout des enfants de moins de 5 ans, ce qui est vraiment déplorable pour des papas comme nous, nous sommes des parents, et de voir des enfants mourir, ça nous fait mal au cœur. Et 
on a un programme qu'on appelle Pregact qui s'intéresse au traitement du paludisme chez la femme enceinte. Expecting mothers with malaria often don't show the symptoms of the disease. Pregnancy hormones suppress the fever and make them feel healthy. But parasites in the placenta may attack the unborn baby. Because of malaria, a lot of children are born dead or significantly underweight. Treatment is desperately needed, but taking anti-malarials during pregnancy also poses serious health risks. PregAct is a clinical study testing four combination treatments based on the drug artemisinin. Researchers are trying to find out which treatment is most effective and poses the least danger to mother and child. Le challenge de notre équipe, c'est de conduire les essais cliniques selon vraiment les standards, les standards très élevés. Donc pour ce qui est des aspects cliniques, que les patients soient bien traités, que tout se passe dans les, selon les normes exigées sur le plan international, aussi bien au niveau labo clinique que dans toutes les, toutes les sections de l'étude. The monitoring and regular follow-up of participating women and babies, as well as the whole community, had a positive effect on general health and reduced infant mortality. Avant, il se passait pas un jour sans qu'on ait un enterre un enfant. Et quand on vous dit femme a accouché, ah son enfant est reparti, et c'était fréquent partout. De sorte que lorsque vous avez une femme enceinte qui attend, au lieu d'être content, vous avez peur, vous êtes angoissé, vous ne savez pas qu'est-ce qui va arriver. Et maintenant, les femmes, quand elles sont, quand elles attendent, de fois elles ne cachent même pas le ventre parce qu'elles sont contentes. Elles savent qu'elles vont donner des enfants qu'elles vont élever. Le CRUN a comme ambition de proposer des solutions pour résoudre les questions de santé des populations, dont le paludisme. Alors nous, nous espérons qu'avec les recherches que nous menons aujourd'hui, dans cinq ans, il y ait moins de paludisme au Burkina. Comme vous savez, c'est une maladie très difficile. Nous ne prétendons pas éradiquer le paludisme, éliminer le paludisme dans cinq ans. Mais nous espérons que dans cinq ans, on pourra réduire le paludisme de moitié. Ce qui est très important, parce que quand vous prenez 5 millions de cas par an pour notre pays, si nous arrivons à le ramener à 2,5 millions, L'impact sur le développement est important et sera visible. Cambodia has made considerable progress from the dark days of civil war. However, the benefits from this progress are not evenly spread. Access to education and healthcare remain a constant challenge. The Sihanouk Hospital Center of Hope is one of the leading non-governmental hospitals in the country. Since 1996, the hospital delivers high quality, free medical care for the poor and disadvantaged. At the start of this century, HIV AIDS spread rapidly in Cambodia, ravaging poor communities. 
ITM's pioneering HIV AIDS research helped the Cyanook Hospital to greatly improve the standard of care for HIV patients. This collaboration also delivered outstanding results for tuberculosis and antimicrobial resistance. ITM brings us uh, the skill for the ART treatment. We are one of the first centers who started antiretroviral therapy to HIV patients. With the capacity building of the ITM, we can also share our knowledge to train other government or other NGO staff to provide care to further patients in the country. ដូចថាមិនដឹងជាយ៉ាងណាអីខ្ញុំអត់ <cười> When they get sick, they become poorer. They, they sold their land, they sold their house, and they become homeless. Uh, they die and leave many children, become orphans, uh, live with the old grandmother, grandparents, who are also cannot work for the income. And, and so it's uh, very tragic when we, we saw this uh, situation. HIV is not only a huge medical and financial problem, it's also a social burden. Once the community finds out about their infection, HIV-positive people are often excluded. They are discriminated from the community, so they cannot live in that community. They have to travel far uh, to live with in the, uh, a new community who did not recognize them. So they always move by like that. Later on, the next community realize they have the disease, they have to live again. So it's very difficult and they, they cannot stay uh, to get uh, good care because of uh, this, this uh, stigmatization. With support of the Antwerp Institute of Tropical Medicine, a cutting-edge laboratory was installed that delivers quality-assured diagnostics. The lab is renowned for combining sound laboratory results and training. By strengthening of our capacity both in the laboratory and the clinical expertise, our expertise was recognized by other partners in the country, also from the Ministry of Health. We shared our experience of the collecting data of the antibiotic resistance and also we are invited to join as a member of the technical working group for combating antimicrobial resistance at the Ministry of Health. Sihanouk Hospital staff has been training doctors throughout Cambodia in the context of the successful national HIV program. A typical morning at the hospital shows a huge intake of patients, sometimes coming from far away rural areas. This all happens in a very organized and efficient manner. The HIV outpatients show up for their daily care. Regular follow-up is key to successful treatment and monitoring the right intake of medicines is crucial. Detailed patient files are meticulously kept up to date. Witness
witnessing the morning consultations, it becomes clear that women constitute a large share of people living with HIV. Patients can also participate in discussion groups with peers, talking to each other about their illness, psychological problems and social exclusion provides emotional support. This is a very long time uh, support in the capacity building. Besides the clinical skill, then also we learn the research skill so that we can attract more grants like research grants to support us. So this is a really special compared to others. We never had that kind of partnership. ជាបាលចឹងទៅហើយយូណាទៅក៏មានជាលបោះអេសេនសេមណោយដោយថាឲ្យពួកខ្ញុំធំធាត់មានកម្លាំងអីងមមួនអញ្ចឹងហើយធ
scientific work in the laboratory is crucial for the diagnosis and treatment of any infectious disease. Here in Peru, the laboratory is producing top-class research results in several areas. You see this laboratory, it was built thanks to the collaboration with Antwerp. And we send a lot of students there to learn some techniques and some people from Belgium come here to learn some field work, for example. So we have different things to, to give to the collaboration. And we both learn from both sides. It is important for us to confirm the diagnosis, which means to find any trace of the parasite because the available drugs right now, all of them, they are toxic for people. So we want to be sure that those who get the therapy and are exposed to these toxic effects, they really need the therapy. There are three different ways to identify the parasite. You can see it through a microscope. It can be grown through culture. or the DNA of the parasite can be detected by a special technique called PCR. In the microscope, they only tell you if it's infected with leishmaniasis, that's all. But they cannot tell you which species is. Is it Brasiliensis or Peruviana? With these advanced techniques, the clinician can know if it's going to be only cutaneous lesions or mucocutaneous lesions. And that is important because the treatment is different. Here at the Institute von Humboldt, they developed this technique, the PCR to diagnosis leishmaniasis. Some people who is coming from the rich country to a poor country, they feel this is like a mine and we, we are going to take the gold and coming back to our country. We publish a good paper in New England and then coming very famous because that is unfair. We prefer to have this kind of horizontal cooperation when we discuss what is important from Peru. And that is the style we are building with the Antwerp Tropical Institute. The good thing about this collaboration is that uh, you establish the priorities in Belgium, but also here in Lima. And you talk with the partner, with your partner in Belgium, and decide what will be the best uh, um, activities that we can do together. The people from the Institute in Andwer came here to learn what we know about Leishmania in the field work and also in the lab work. And they start to work together and then transfer the knowledge to Antwerp and to other areas in the region. The cooperation with the Belgian is coming absolutely important. Right now, we have 12 PhD candidates. Nine is coming to Belgium. One in the Leuven University and eight to the Antwerp Tropical Institute. This kind of a cooperation is one of the best cooperation we have in Peru related to the science support. People working towards their PhDs conduct their research over four years in a so-called sandwich program. Part of the time they study in Antwerp, but for most of the four years, they undertake field work at their home base. The advantage is that they don't lose contact with their country of origin. Most of the people that finish the bachelor program, they just apply for a PhD in the United States or in Europe. They promise to come back, but they never come back. With this program, I think you have the opportunity to continue in contact with your home institution and try to build a career here. Thanks to this sandwich program, I had the opportunity to go for training to some of these countries like Burkina Faso. I also met people from other parts like Cambodia, from India, from Benin. A uh, really great opportunity to make a big network and get closer with them.
because we are training within this uh, switching the poles or this uh, very horizontal collaboration. Now I'm applying that to interact with my new partner from the United States. And I can say what I'm interested to do and I can stand for it. And they accept that. So now they say that they cannot fight with me but because they always lose. <laughs> We are growing and we have very independent with high quality of the training and for that reason uh, right now we can training more than 700 doctors, medical doctors from 72 countries here in Peru. We change the polls and right now we're training people from the north who is coming to learn in the south what happened in the tropical diseases. L'IMT, c'est l'Institut de médecine tropicale. Hein? Mais les tropiques, c'est chez nous. Il y a cette expérience que nous pouvons transmettre à nos partenaires du Nord. Switching the poles means that we want to make countries, and particularly the institutes in our field, capable of running their own business and of helping their own countries. Les choses sont en train de s'inverser et il faut continuer à former encore beaucoup de jeunes africains. Et je pense que dans quelques années, on va être au même niveau parce que c'est l'équilibre qu'on recherche. Il faut que le Sud également prenne le lead des choses et que ce soit vraiment un partenariat avec respect mutuel et pas seulement un qui traîne l'autre. C'est ça pour moi, Fushin de Poil. Tropical medicine is a beautiful science and science is international. And science will be there always for centuries to come. Scientific capacity building is having doctoral students, master students, postdoctoral scientists work in science, learning to do projects, learning to do papers, learning to formulate questions. But the second part is much less visible and much more difficult, that is to strengthen the institutional capacity. You can train a scientist, but if he cannot find a job, or cannot find a laboratory, or cannot find a management that takes care of his needs and that provides sufficient funding, then he cannot do his work. So creating and building this institutional capacity is really a very important and I think also a quite original part of our program. Grâce à l'argent investi pour me former au niveau PhD, et grâce à l'argent investi pour me ramener ici, voilà que j'ai contribué à la lutte contre la pauvreté pour mon pays ce qui a un impact sur le développement, la qualité des soins améliorée, ce qui profite aux populations. Donc vous voyez que ce type de collaboration, où c'est nous qui décidons et que l'IMT collabore avec nous, je le trouve très positif et assez original. The Tropical Institute has this, this enormous network of people who are doing very similar things to what you are doing in your home country. And that exchange is dynamic, it's explosive. Because you come back having seen and talked to people who are trying things themselves. And that's, that's a fantastic learning experience.